So in this lecture, we are going to study axonometric projections, in particular isometric projections. So what are isometric projections? They are axonometric projections in which all the foreshortening factors, fx, fy, and fz are equal. As compared to the diametric projections, the measurement of the image along the third coordinate axis may actually lead to some confusions in understanding the shape of the original object. So in the case of diametric projection, the scaling factors along x direction, which was fx, and the scaling factor along fy, along the y direction, these were equal, but the scaling factor in the z direction, that is fz, was kept to be arbitrary, right? In the case of the trimetric projections, actually all the three foreshortening factors were, were taken to be unequal. And we have seen in the previous lectures how the projections do actually look. But we may get a little better idea if all these scaling factors are actually equal, right? So if we are given that the projected image of some object is given to us, and if, if you are known that all the scaling factors were equal, then it will help us to understand the original shape of the object. So now here onwards, what we will assume is that suppose the projected image is given. Using this, can we imagine the original shape of the object? So this will be somewhat in a reverse fashion. We will try to understand isometric projections. OK, so this is done for what? This is done to eliminate the errors and confusions that occur while actually understanding the shape of the factor. So what in isometric projection, if you assume that fx is equal to fy is equal to fz, and what you know is that from diametric projections, the value of theta came up to be sine inverse of plus minus fz upon square root of 2, right? So this means that sine theta is actually equal to plus minus fz upon square root 2, but we know that this is an isometric projection, so fz can be equal to what? fy also, which is further equal to fx, and therefore this is nothing but plus minus fy upon root 2 sine theta is equal to this. Okay, so when you square both the sides, you will get sine square theta is equal to fy square upon 2, but we know that the, the foreshortening factor along the y axis is what? Fy is cos theta. And this means that sine square theta, which is uh, multiplier 2 here, is equal to cos square theta. And this cos square theta can be written as 1 minus sine square theta. And this is 2 sine square theta, which eventually means that 3 sine square theta is equal to 1. And therefore, we get that sine theta is equal to plus minus 1 by root 3 and therefore theta comes out to be plus minus 35.26 degrees in the case of an isometric projection but we know that sine square phi is related by relation sine square theta upon 1 minus sine square theta so when I substitute sine theta equal to 1 by root 3 over there I will get 1 over root 3 square which is 1 over 3 minus 1 over 1 by 3 and that will come out to be half and this means that sine phi is plus minus 1 by root 2 and therefore phi will be equal to plus minus 45 degrees so what we have obtained is that theta comes out to be 35.26 degrees plus minus and phi comes out to be plus minus 45 degrees remember theta was rotation about the x-axis and phi was rotation of the object about the y-axis and therefore we get four pairs for isometric projection uh, same as the diametric projection In diametric also we had four pairs what are the four pairs the four pairs are that phi positive theta positive means phi is 45 degrees theta is plus 35 degrees second pair is phi negative theta positive the third pair will be let me write pairs like this third pair will be phi negative theta negative okay and the last pair of angles will be phi positive but theta negative. So these are the four pairs that you will get for isometric projections. Okay. Now 
let us take one uh, simple example so if i write the if i try to write the matrix of ice uh, of isometric projection we know that the matrix is given by what in general matrix of axonometric projection is given by cos phi sin phi sin theta and then this is a cos theta this is a sin phi this is minus cos phi sin theta and here you have 0 0 0 because it's a projection on the z axis and this is 0 0 0 1 so this is the matrix when you substitute for suppose i take theta positive and phi is also positive what is theta positive theta positive was theta i'm taking 35.26 degrees phi i'm taking 45 degrees when i substitute this in the in this above matrix the matrix for action metric projection will eventually come up to be 0 0.7071 0 0.4082 this will come to be 0 0.8165 this will be 0 0.07071 this will be minus 0 0.4082 and this will be zero throughout this is 0, 0, 0, 0001 and this is 0, 0 this is also zero so this is the ma like a matrix of isometric projection when theta and phi both are positive similarly the other three matrices also can be calculated now let us apply this type of axonometric projection on a particular cube which is with uh, with one vertex cut so as we have seen in the diametric projection so what is the what is this object described by so this cube with one vertex cut has corner 0 0 1 then 1 0 1 and this 1 0 0.5 this is the edge of the cut this is the vertex of the edge the cut edge then you have 0 0.5 1 1 then you have 0 1 1 you have the origin also there you have one zero zero you have one one zero and then you have zero one zero and you have one 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 point five and in the homogeneous coordinates i'm going to insert a one everywhere okay so this will be the object uh, which is a cube with one vertex cut okay now what we will do is we will see how how does this object when it is applied with the four type of action or four type of isometric projections are applied on this particular object x how does the object actually looks like so this is the object that we were talking of uh, the vertex is cut okay now what we are going to do is we are going to do the first type of uh, isometric projection we are going to rotate it along y axis by 45 uh, degrees and now i'm going to rotate it about uh, 35.26 degrees about the x-axis you can see that you can see the plane yz plane also so and then i will look at from the top view i will, I will look let the z-axis go into my straight into my eyes and i'll calibrate the x and y axis so that x goes to the right direction y goes up so this is the first type now if i do look for the second type now i'm going to take phi positive so i'm going to take phi as 45 degrees and i'm going to take theta as approximately 35 degrees that is a rotation about x-axis will uh, will now i will make negative which is minus 35 degrees and i'll look at the top view and this is the top view you can see i'll just take a minute and then i will calibrate the x and y axis also it's, so this is the second view the third view is now i will take phi uh, negative okay now i'll rotate it along y axis by minus 45 degrees it will uh, it is uh, one i'm just rotating it's not going about this let me still try to rotate it about till 45 degree minus 45 degrees it's not exceeding this so give me a minute yes so it has done okay so now it has come here and then i'll rotate about the x-axis by minus 35 degrees so then i will now look at the top view so let me see the top view and 
here comes the top view and i'll calibrate the x and y axis so that x goes in the right direction y goes in the negative ne, y goes in the upper direction so this becomes the third view now let us go for the fourth view the fourth view i will take phi is again negative which is uh, minus uh, 45 degrees i'm trying to stretch it till minus 45 degrees yes okay and theta is positive i'm going to take i'm going to rotate by along around x axis by plus 35 degrees and now i see the top view so once this is done i am going to now go and see the top view again and uh, here i see the top view i will calibrate the x and y axis accordingly positive x axis on the right side negative and positive y axis on the upper side so this is the uh, fourth view so after capturing the photographs of each type of uh, isometric pro axonometric projection this was the first case where both phi and theta were taken to be positive this was the second case where phi was positive and theta was taken negative this was the third one where phi was negative and theta was also negative and this is the fourth case where phi is negative and theta is positive if you compare this with the diametric projections that we have done in the previous lecture these were the diametric projections for various uh, theta and uh, phi okay i have also done the same thing for trimetric projections these were the different different angles at which i have taken uh, phi equal to 15 and theta equal to 15 so i got a trimetric projection i varied phi and theta accordingly and these are the different types of views now observe in all the out of all the three projections look carefully at the trimetric projections you see that the triangle that was there the equilateral triangle was there in in none of these uh, projections these are trimetric projections okay where you can see the triangle uh, very clearly you are not able to identify which type of triangle it is when it when it did that for diametric projection here also in the first second and third okay i could not see the equilateral triangle properly but here it looks a little bit like an equilateral triangle but we are really not sure whether it's really an equilateral triangle or not but when i did for isometric projection you can see that in this case the equilateral triangle here actually looks very much perfect okay though these other images may not help you in identifying which type of triangle it was but this type of isometric projection uh, told us that this type of the triangle that is there in your object is actually which type of triangle it is an equilateral triangle this is the reason we were not happy with trimetric we were not happy with diametric and finally we have settled down somewhere that uh, is uh, isometric projections are far more better than as compared to the trimetric projections and diametric projections but there are some limitations in axonometric projections also for example isometric projections either any type of axonometric projection will actually fail us to give the projections of an object if the object contains a curved surface or a circular surface so this type of problem will be handled by new type of of projections which are called as oblique projections okay so in oblique projections we are going to tackle all the surfaces or all the objects which have curved or circular surfaces and there and then their projections will be very much uh, correct as per our requirements so with this the three types of axonometric projections are now over in this lecture